Hello and welcome to another Somerset Real Ale review. Um, today I have the beer I've been longing to try for ages. It is the St. Austell Proper Black. Look at that. That is a lovely looking bottle that's got on the, the, the neck of the bottle there. It is a clear glass bottle, but um, you know, hopefully they're. Uh, there's not going to be any skunking issues. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't have thought so. With a with a brewery this uh, of this stature, you would uh, you'd, be, you'd be very surprised. Um, it's uh, yes. And so it's in a clear glass 500 ml bottle. Um, it's an Austell proper black. It's bottle condition. It's uh, six percent uh, ABV. Um, right. Well, I think to be honest, we better pop this open. I suppose. Really looking forward to this. There we go, tiny bit of smoke at the top of the bottle there. It's a black IPA this. Now, I've never had one before, so... Look at that. A black IPA. Got a lot of carbonation in there. Look at the size of that head. It's probably my pour in mine. Um, I have, I got an admission to make, I have, I bought this about half an hour ago and I know you're supposed to, with bottle conditioned ales, you're supposed to let them settle um, to uh, to let the uh, the, the uh, sediment in there settle. So I mean to be honest it probably is my fault that it's got such a huge four finger head. A four finger head. And it's, uh, I mean the beer is well, I cannot see through that beer. I mean, the light is right in between the lens and and the and the beer in the camera. You know, I mean, the light, and so you can't see anything through that at all. The light you see on there is the reflection of the camera. Um, a slight bit of carbonation coming from the bottom of the beer there. Um. And the head is sort of a a tan colour, um, sort of a light brown, um, which does seem to be dissipating. Whilst I've been talking, it's now a three finger head, which is good. Um, right, let's get the nose in. That's all right. I've just been I've just literally been to the beer shop from work and got home, so I'm all over the shop here. So. Uh, right, let's have a sniff then. Amazing! It smells like an IPA, but it looks—it looks like a dark beer, like a, a, a like a porter or a stout. I'm just getting hops in that. Now, give it a switch around a bit. Maybe. I don't know whether it's my mind playing tricks on it, on me, but it does smell a bit coffee. A bit, you can smell a bit of coffee in there because I mean the the way they get the the um, it's, it's obviously brewed with the malts, um, which gives the darkness, and then the pots, the hops are supposed to overpower the malts so that it tastes like an IPA. <coughs> Well, that's how I interpret it anyway. I could be completely wrong, but... Right, well, I'm going to dig in because I can't wait any longer. Mind games. Mind games. Although I can taste, yeah, 
initially it's um, you get a bit of bitterness um, then followed by the um, hoppy hoppy flavours but now I can taste a bit of sort of coffee I wouldn't go as far as chocolate but I can taste a coffee-ish the hop and the uh, multi multi flavour in the throat and the, t and the back of the tongue um, but it's just so unusual to get a hoppy flavour from a, from a dark beer. I mean, like I said, this is the first one I've ever had. If you've had a lot of black IPAs before, then you obviously you, you, this is irrelevant to you because you already know this. Um, but it's just so strange to be drinking an IPA that is this colour and and getting an aftertaste of of, of coffee to it. You see the condition. I mean, there's still a bit of lacing on the side of the glass there. Better in front of me. Um, so it's a good condition here. I mean, for six percent, it's it's held its head. Um, I'm going to fire a bit more of that in. Oh me! I bought this from my local shop down the road. It's called MT Bottles. It's <laughs> quite a funny name for a for a beer shop. Although if you did went in there and there's empty, empty bottles everywhere, you wouldn't be very happy. Um, I really like that. It just challenges you, really challenges you. Um, I suppose in the way I, I am, I've, I've seen a few other reviews on this, and I'm trying to pick out the flavours. Um, but my, my palate isn't well adjusted enough, I, I haven't been doing this long enough yet. Um, but, I mean, that doesn't mean I can't appreciate it, which I can. I think that is fantastic. It could do with being a little bit colder. Um, once again, my fault because I just rushed home and popped it open because I was so desperate. But. Hey, I've got quite a few of these in stock, so I might go back down and buy some more later in the week um, and chill it down. Um, I'm just like a kid in a toy shop with these beers. I just can't uh, can't stop drinking them. Uh, right, let's read the bottle for you. Uh, bottle condition: proper black, powerfully hot, in black India Pale Ale. And there's a signature from the head brewer there. You can see that. Um, proper black, controversial, a contradiction in terms, certainly a subject for discussion. Is there such a thing as a black India pale ale? Whichever way you look at it, this beer is designed to challenge the senses. Black as stout, close your eyes and taste this beer, is classic IPA. Powerful hops dominate the restrained chocolate and coffee notes. Didn't get any chocolate from it. No. Um, and the carefully selected roasted malt. When you thought, whatever you thought you knew about beer, we've just changed that. Ingredients: Cornish spring water, Maris Otter pale ale malt, malted wheat, roasted malt, Brewers Gold hops, Chinook, uh, Centennial, Cascade, uh, hops, uh, our own Brewers yeast. It's got a little chart there on the bottom, which I will read out to you because there's no chance you're ever going to read that on this camera. It says colour black. Aroma, pineapple, apricot, dark chocolate. Pineapple and apricot? I'll have another sniff in there. Now. Taste, fruit, hops and espresso. Well, there's the coffee and the hops. Yeah, you've got those. And you get the fruit. Uh, malt, Marisota, pale ale malt. Malted wheat, roasted malt. Hops, brewers, gold, uh, chinook, centennial and cascade. It's got four stars for bitter and two for sweet. Yeah, there's no, there's, I wouldn't say there's any sweetness in this beer very little sweetness. Um, right, well, <coughs> if you've seen my reviews before, you'll know that I like to give, I mean, bottle condition ale has got a bit of, the brewer puts a bit of yeast in the bottom of the bottle to make it, to condition it, give it a bit of carbonation, make it a more 
well, a nicer brew really. Um, anyway, I like I like to drink it. You, they say that don't do it, but I think it comes down to personal choice really. And I I, I like I personally like it. I think this review's getting on for around ten minutes now, so I'm going to pour this in. See, look at that. Right. Well, obviously, being a clear bottle, you can see that's everything gone out of there now by the uh, by the foamage. I still can't get any pineapple on the aroma. No chance. But then it's each of their own. Oh, so much smoother. Yeah. I really like that. Um, now I've got the um, proper job to review as well will be tonight, um, the other night in the week, which I've had before on cask, and I think that's fantastic on cask, which I think is like the sort of sister ale to this, so they've named it Proper Black and Proper Job. Um, so uh, be sure to follow that one. Um, I'm going to give that, that's going to get a good 9 out of 10 from me. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Um, if you want to get in contact with me, uh, email is uh, somersetrealalereviews at gmail.com. Uh, Search for me on Facebook, Somerset Real Air Reviews, and you're obviously already on YouTube. Um, if you want to subscribe to Real Air 1977, that'd be great. Um, love to read your comments if you've got any comments on it. Uh, fantastic. Um, I will reply to them, um, and I'll see you on the next review. Cheers.